some stats. Um, voltage, 7 to 12 volts is recommended. You can run it up to 18, but mm -hmm. you could fry it if, if you keep it up. Um, there are 16 digital pens, uh, flash memory, 32 kilobytes, and 5 kilobytes, 0.5 kilobytes used by the bit loader. Um, SRAM, 2 kilobytes, EEP ROM, 1 kilobyte, clock speed 16 megahertz, weight 25 grams, and usually costs about $22. That's if you go with the um, actual build of, from uh, the people who make it, but you can get off brands for like eight bucks. What's the communication? There's no Wi-Fi? Uh, no, not on these boards. Um, it's just, um, yeah, it's just USB. Um, there's all type, different types of boards. So um, right here, this is a wearable. Um, you can uh, put it on clothes and then use uh, stainless steel thread to connect um, the connection. Um, the uh, Mega, um, which is the big one, is used, I believe, primarily in robots because there's so many connections. You can have different, you can run anything on that. Um, the Leonardo is nice. That's more USB. Um, where the other ones, the, the Rev3, um, has a bootloader um, and all the processing power in there. So it's nice for prototyping. You can pull that right off and solder it on a board. Where this is more just for prototyping. Um, this is also a nice prototype board. You can plug it in right to a breadboard and just uh, connect anything you want and do quick tests with it. So Arduinos have a ton of shields, so you can do Wi-Fi if you want um, with a shield. Um, so the shield I have here is um, a cell phone shield, so you can just connect a um, GSM SIM card and program it. This thing is a piece of crap, though, so I've never really <laughs> been able to do it on this one. Um, so there's hundreds of different kinds. There's prototyping boards. Um, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, uh, different t t sorts of wireless, Bluetooth, and, and GPS. Um, some you can do music and sound effects, and they'll play MP3s if you want. Um, you have LCDs and cameras on them, and they'll also drive motors. So here's uh, some shields. Uh, this is to drive an LCD panel. Um, this is actually a pretty cheap module. I think it's like or shield. Um, it's only like eight bucks, but the LCD is going to cost you. I can't remember how much that is. This is a Wi-Fi slash near near field communication shield. Um, this one here is an RFID reader and I believe a writer. Um, and then you can see an LCD. You can also throw on there too. So when you start, when you install the software, you want to First, let's see what the first one is. So this is showing examples of different um, programs that are already pre-made in there. Um, so it's easy to test out different, um, like your LCD or, or um, on a shield or different um, LEDs or anything like that by just picking it and seeing what the uh, schematic is online. And there's also some that are um, specific to the shield or certain, uh, uh, let's see, libraries. Um, then I can pick that out. You want to pick what board you have. So there's so many, this is all the list of boards, and this is not even all of them. This is probably like a third of them, maybe. Um, so you want to pick your board out, and then you want to pick your serial port, which is a COM3 usually, or USB, um, to get going. So I want to show a simple project. Um, this is just a, this is a schematic, and it's just showing that it's using pin three, four, and five for each LED, and you have, you have ground going here and resistors feeding into it so you don't blow up the, um, the, LC, the uh, LEDs. So I'll get this going really quick. So you can show there. Um, this is just set on a, a timer um, on there, so it will keep changing. Um, and what you can do, you go in here, and so this is the code. So this kind of shows that, um, you probably all can't see this, sorry for how small it is. 
So it, you, you show all the variables. So green's three for the pin on the board. And then you have yellow is four for the pin. And red is five on the pin. And so that's just to keep things in order. And these are the delays for each color. Um, and then you have the setup, and, and basically in here, you set what each light does. So you can do high, which is on, and low is off. So what I can do, so I'll, I will take the yellow and I'll make everything high. So everything should turn on changing that. And um, you can also change the delay if you want, but I'll just do this for right now. So this is uploading into the code or into the board. I mean, you can see the LEDs, so as soon as this goes to the next one, they should all turn on. Let's see if I'm right. There we go. So it's pretty easy to just change it um, quickly and, and do, a, do a different tests. That's what's so nice about the boards. Um, we can also change the variables, too. I'll just make these really quick. Um, And when you upload it, it does check your code to make sure you're doing it right. So you can kind of see it down here at the bottom. Um, so let's do a quick upload here. So there's an interpreter that you yes. can write for? Yep. So you can see it's going faster, all turning out quicker. Um, so it's really nice to be able to just, because I'm a horrible programmer, um, it's nice to be able to just keep playing around with it until you get it right. And it goes pretty quick. Um, so, so then the next one, the next example I have is with a photoresistor. Um, basically, all this does is see how much light is in in the surrounding area, and it will print it to a serial port connection. So what I'll do is I'll plug it in here. So I'm not that good with serial stuff, but basically you have the serial rate, uh, 9600, um, and then basically it's just going to print out what the variable is for the photoresistor. So when we run it, we're going to upload the code, and you want to go to Tools, and then Serial Monitor. So right now it's saying 4, 4 and 5. Sorry, you probably, no one can see that, I'm sure. Um, and then when I put a flashlight on it, it's going to 23, 27, 28. Um, so it's nice to be able to do, to test it. You can, you can run the council um, while you're doing testing to make sure those variables are correct. And then you can feed those variables into something else that's meaningful. Um, So then other projects. So I'm going to show a few of the things I've made over the years. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with Halloween, so I like to make Halloween costumes. Um, so this first one, I'll get going. So usually this has a battery pack. I couldn't find it. So this is plugged into the wall. Um, what this is is a inverter that takes 12 volts and converts it to 110 volts. Um, it's not like... <coughs> It's now like the amperage is high. Um, so that uh, powers the EL wire. So this is the board that it's running. And each um, EL wire is connected to each one of the, these connections. So it's really simple um, to use. And I used a RFID, no, not RFID, uh, RF remote. Um, and I plugged it in. Basically, I soldered some leads here and then manually put it on there with some tape. Not the best way. Um, so I can turn it on. Can you get the lights? Which one was it? That one, yeah. So you can kind of see it right there. Um, I have a bunch of different patterns. So this is, this is a random one I, I made. Um, let's see what this one is. This is a slow one. Um, and then, let's see. Let's see if I can do this. So this, this, the one through eight um, controls each individual strand, so I can turn it on when I want. Um, this was pretty simple. It, it kind of looks, I don't know, maybe to some of you complicated. It's actually one of the most simple projects you can do because it's just 
individual strings you're controlling. So you can write um, a case statement to take in the RF, um, the, I mean the IR with the remote, and uh, pretty easily. So that's my first one. Um, and then, let's see. so this is a uh, address I made. Um, so is that, is that for you? It was for you, actually. <laughs> 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 Um, so this, uh, can you turn on the lights on this one? Thanks. So this one's pretty cool. Um, so this uses the wearable Arduino, and it uses um, the addressable LEDs, but you can see how small they are, and it also has Bluetooth on it. So, um, you can kind of see what I did here. Um, so this is the Arduino, this is the Bluetooth. I disabled the Bluetooth on this because it doesn't work that well for for using, well, it didn't work well for me. Um, but basically, I couldn't control each individual strand the way I wanted. Um, so what, what this is, it's, it's actually um, sewn on with stainless steel thread. So each connection is stainless steel thread. What I did, though, is by the time you get down here, the, LED, the um, L LEDs don't have enough power. So I made sure I enforced, reinforced everything with cable. <coughs> um, it wasn't ideal, but it made it work. And that way, if anything broke, it had another route to go. And because all these LEDs are addressable, if, you, if I wanted to, I could just turn on this LED or this one or this one. So you can have all different sorts of patterns going on this. Um, I'm not that good at programming, so the, you're just, I'm just doing like the basic part. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's about it on that one. Um, and then I made this cloud. Um, can you get the light on this one? Yeah, the cloud. The cloud. <laughs> uh, yes, can you get the light on this one? So this one. Um, that's how that looks. So I actually made this in a day. Not that I'm trying to brag, it's just that simple um, to make. So what it is, it's another uh, wearable and it also has the addressable LEDs. So that's why you can get different strands all over um, doing different color lightning. Um, and then it uses a lithium ion battery and this thing has been, it hasn't been on all the time but that was this. I made this three years ago. That's why it looks so bad too. It's like all falling apart. Too. So it, it's not made for durability. Uh, and Matt dropped it while we were coming here. So, uh, yeah. So it looks like a ratty dog, but because it pretty much is. Um, so yeah, this is a super simple one. Um, basically, all I did is I actually soldered these leads. I didn't try to do um, stainless steel um, um, thread. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was super easy. I just hot glued them on, um, soldered them. Actually, I soldered them, then put hot glue on them, and then just put a bunch of the, uh, the fabric on. And this was my wife's um, Halloween costume um, that she had. And it looks pretty cool when it's pitch black out. So the fade yeah. on the lights, where, where, where is that? Where so you can program that. So fades, you can program with these addressables. Um, some LEDs you can't. Fade, well, yeah, you can fade um, LEDs, sorry, but you can't fade EL wire. Um, so any anything you want to fade, you can do. I'm like so in that in the code, the fade? Um, it has the ability to fade, yeah, in the way the processor and the power works with the LEDs. Um, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. Um, so yeah, there's that. Is the fade like a switch or do you program that? It's programmed. So unfortunately, because I made all these projects like over three years ago, I don't know where my code is. Um, and Matt asked me like last week to do this. So uh, yeah. Surprise. Yeah, surprise. surprise. Um, so it's kind of a, a quick and dirty intro. Um, I wish I could do a little bit more, but that's OK. Um, I probably still wanted to find the code. Um, so yeah, I don't know how these are programmed anymore. Um, most of my code is just stolen. I don't, I'm not a programmer, so I just, I just find different patterns I like, and then what I do is I just keep testing until I get the pattern I like. You um, pull the code off the board? 
No, because it's compiled. Yeah. If only somebody here could reverse that paradigm. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a cool I think, I think we should have another talk. <laughs> <laughs> Demo time. Yeah. So there's, that, your, so there's uh, a CTF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's extending CTF now. Yeah. <laughs> you can turn So then, uh, this is another cool, some cool projects people have done. So, this is a fingerprint reader for a garage door opener. Um, someone built their own cell phone. Um, so basically, <laughs> yeah. you take this shield, and then you take it up, and then also with these shields, you can stack more shields on. Um, there is a limit to it where every pin is used or pins are used multiple times and it just won't work. Um, but yeah, you could like, in theory, take this, take this, and then get an LCD screen and some power and you can make this into a cell phone. This actually does have a microphone and a speaker on it. Um, so it can be done. You can also send text messages to these and control your project through your cell phone, um, which is what I wanted to do, but couldn't figure it out. Um, this is a cool project. This was uh, like four years ago. So someone took the Uno bootloader and basically did some programming, soldered it together. And what this does is it opens up certain hotel room doors. So with this, I think it's a bullet port. I, don't, I can't recall what it's called. Um, so basically, you push it in the bottom of the door, and uh, it sends out, it's, it's just a standard like code. There was nothing like, there's an, it was just horrible security. Um, and it would just open the door because there was like an administrator code. And so you plug it in, it in and it can open the door. So that was a cool project. So I have a box of stuff. Uh, so, okay. So I just want to kind of go through some of the stuff I have. Um, so this is. This is kind of a cool kit. You can get this on Amazon. I suck at soldering, so this is kind of nice to practice on because you can make your own uh, FM radio. Uh, let's see if it works. So because we're in a building, there's like no reception, but it actually does work. Um, so that's kind of cool. So that was like the one you kit. Do you know that one? No, I'm not familiar. It was a, a, a kit you buy with all the disassembled tubes and the PC boards and okay. instructions to solder it together. Yeah. Is that what you're showing? Kind of, yeah. I, I, I believe it's probably the same thing. Yeah, so yeah, all the parts came um, and I just soldered it on. It was just more to like learn how to solder and like what each component does. Did it work? Yeah, it worked first time. I couldn't believe it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a, a hack, there's a subscription service called Hacker Hackerbox. Uh, yeah. I think that there's a couple guys from Stack DSM that get that every month, and, and they send you Arduino projects. It's like forty bucks. All the parts in a bag. Yeah. And then you never have time to get them all built. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, 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 a pile of little yeah. hacker boxes in yeah. my closet. Not that I not that I don't have. Where you get it built? They're fun to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is one of the addressable LEDs. This is how small it is. This is on the wearables. Um, if anyone wants to see this stuff, you can more than welcome to check it out after the talk. Oh. That's the addressable LED. Yeah. What did that cost? Um, those costs, I think, eight. Um, let's see, like ten dollars for a four pack, I think. So they're kind of pricey, but. They're like the only ones you can do. You can also order these from China. I didn't have enough time to do that because they're already made in China mm -hmm. and then that and company And they're just... addressable um, through uh, asynchronous address or uh, um, uh, I can't I can't recall how it's set up. Do you, do you wire to each uh, LED discreetly or is it on a bus? It's, um, it's on a bus, so it's on a solid connection. That, is that a bus, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Just so it's a bus and it's probably something like, uh, uh, so they're all multi-jumped along that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so th these are the ones you can control each individual one if you want. It, uh, it's really quite amazing how well they work. And you can also get the just uh, the cell. You don't need all this extra connection, um, but that's like pretty extreme soldering. Um, so let's see here. Um, so with, with these UNO boards, if you want to say you have a project you really like, you could just put it on this board, solder it together, 
and then your, your board's done as long as you have power. So you don't have to, these are like, I think about four bucks a piece, so you can just make whatever you want and just control it that way. Um, let's see, this, let's see, this is a uh, relay module. Um, so this is really cool. You can control 120 volts. I think it might go higher. Um, let's see. Yeah, it goes up to 240 volts you can control on these things. So a lot of people have actually like made their house a smart house um, with these um, by controlling everything through maybe an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah, I would not. I would not recommend it. I feel like that's a bad idea and a good way to burn down your house. Um, I've ne I've never had a bad experience with it, but I just don't trust it that much. Um, so, with these boards, these this is kind of like um, this is kind of like the insides of how these boards work. So, on the side, you have the power rails. So these are the power rails, uh, positive, and negative, right here and here. And then these are the I don't know the other bars. I'm not sure what they're called. Um, and these are connected um, um, together. So that's how these, these work, if, if anyone was wondering. Um, this is a sound modulator. Um, so you can, it's basically like the photos, photo resistor, but for sound. So you can, you can make a clapper with this one. So maybe you should look into that. <laughs> um, this one's a Bluetooth. Um, I never got this one to successfully run. So that's kind of the problem with some Arduino stuff for me. Um, it's not super easy to figure out sometimes. It's not like plug and play and you're done. Uh, this was one of them that I could never figure out. <coughs> um, let's see here. This is um, an AVR programmer. So this kind of works with if you decide to solder on leads on your B-Sides badge, this will connect to it, and then you can program it. So plug it in. I have not. I just bought this. I've not tested it yet, uh, but it looks kind of simple to do. So that's something I'll play around with. Maybe I just working on buying a house, so I highly doubt I have any time anymore. Um, and then this is a little lithium-ion charger. Um, so my cloud runs off that battery. So this is all it takes to charge it. <laughs> yeah. Um, my personal cloud. <laughs> yeah, my personal cloud. Yeah, that's right. Um, so when you order um, the thread for any wearables, it just comes this big. You can't get it any bigger, unfortunately. Um, so I, it's kind of heavy, uh, kind of interesting. Um, these are just RB, RGB um, LEDs, so they're not addressable, but they can become any color you want. And then these are kind of cool. These are, I can't remember what frequency these, these run on, but you can plug these in to your Arduino and have communication between both of them. So what some people will do is make one a master and one a slave. So say like uh, me and another friend wanted to have the same suits um, at running at the same pattern. You could deal with these because they'll connect to each other and they'll run the code on the other one. So, so you could like build pong between the two of you. You could, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can also do like a chat, um, which is kind of cool. I've done that before. What's the, what's the distance on this? I only tested it at about twenty feet. Um, I didn't go any farther than that. Um, let's see what else we got. These are just plain LEDs. Um, so basically, there's just two connections where the RGB ones have four, um, so we can, I'm sorry, no one can probably see any of this really well. Um, let's see what else we got here. So if you want to add a timer on your project, you can use a 555 timer. Um, these are kind of easy to make um, or to use. And they're a little different than adding just like the timer on, um, like I used on here. Um, it's a little bit more accurate. I think. Yeah. So basically, like, why is this important to know? Well, if you go to conferences, you're going to get badges. Almost every badge just runs off Arduino. So if you want to at least access the badge, you should probably know a little bit of this. 
Um, and then I don't really participate in the badge hacking because I don't like the puzzles. I just like building stuff. Um, the yeah, the nerd trickery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's why it's kind of important. So you can learn that way. Um, but yeah, and then um, to get started, um, these kits, this is like 60 on Amazon, I think. This is like mm, 40 on eBay. And I was like, get a tackle box, because these pieces will go all over your house if you don't. Um, but these are great because they'll come with like CDs on how to get started of uh, different projects, and it will label it out. And if you don't know, like, if, a, if something's not easy to figure out, just Google it, um, what, what, what you're trying to do, um, and most likely someone's already done it. So does anyone have any questions? Are there good communities? Uh, just Google. Yeah, yeah. I don't know of any communities. Probably um, the cosplay communities would probably be pretty good because I know a lot of people do. Or we have Sec I C Slack channel might be a good place too. Yeah. Oh, is there one? I didn't. I didn't realize. Yeah, there's totally one. Yeah. 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 Just don't check yeah. it yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of followers in yeah. there. Yeah. However. Uh, oh, so Open source stuff on like GitHub. Yeah, yeah. So, um, was that? Is that where you got? Um, I've gotten some stuff off there. Yeah. Um, trying to think of some of the good sites. I can't think of the names of the ones I've used before. Somebody said like that. Is there any subreddits or know of or? I I'm sure there is. Right. I've never <laughs> subscribed to. Yeah, yeah. 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 a good place to start. Uh, I know No Stars Press has a lot of Arduino yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, and they have a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of Arduino books you can, you can learn on. Um, yeah. yeah. Is the Arduino channel private, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Hardware Hacking. <laughs> I, I just couldn't quite remember what it was called. <laughs> no, it's totally there. I can see it. behind a clever name. <laughs> <laughs> Security through security. <laughs> right. hey. Um, are there any particular brands you'd recommend for, for tools, toolkits? Um, the ones you're showing up there, are there? I I would say just use anything. It's not, I, well, if you, okay, so Adafruit built some really good stuff in Spark, Spark Fun. Um, if you want to go with a, a decent vendor, um, those, they, they have a really good quality here. Yeah. And the Spark Fun is where that, uh, the board I have, um, that board is made by them. So there's certain boards that vendors will build themselves uh, for uh, unique things. Yeah. How would you suggest staying with like Arduino, the Arduino brand for the Arduino board, or do you find the knockoff stuff to work? I've never board? heard of any complaints about the knockoffs, but I've never used any. Um, yeah, and it's only like, you're only talking about like, a few dollar difference. I mean, a few dollars could be half the price so on some of these products. Um, so it's just up to you. And oh yeah, like the wearables, that's made by Adafruit only. Um, so you'd have to get Adafruit only for that. Um, same with um, the um, Bluetooth and the uh, connection for that. Can we mention the NoStarts book? There are a bunch of NoStarts books for Arduino stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. If you're listening on the live stream, maybe we could give away NoStarts books and NoStarts. If we had free big books, <laughs> we give them away. Um, anyone else got any questions? Okay. I think that's it.